Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, last year, some of you might remember a trip to the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. Uh, we're doing it again. We're starting the adventure off here at Kentucky Peerless. I've never been, I've never had any of their stuff. Uh, we got signed up, we're gonna do a quick tasting here and check some stuff out. And um, you know, we, uh, we're staying in Frankfurt for the weekend and we're gonna be out kind of near Buffalo Trace and all them. Um, gonna hit some other stops uh, tomorrow, and tomorrow, Friday, and then Saturday. Uh, but for now, I'm uh, going to get in here, check this out, and hit another couple more spots down the Louisville. Just wrapped up in Peerless, had an awesome time, did the tasting, you get to try three or four different bottles. Um, really good stuff, really nice small craft distillery here. Um, man, it was really hard to walk away and not buy any of the stuff from the gift shop. I wanted to take some of these things home. We're gonna go up Main Street here and uh, check out some other stuff. You know, I'm trying to save that bourbon budget for a little while longer and uh, who knows, maybe I'll regret it. But uh, you guys let me know in the comments, how bad did I mess up not taking that uh, double oak rye home? I'm kind of regretting it. So anyway, we'll see at the next stop. Well, we've time traveled a bit. It's now the next morning. I uh, did make two more stops yesterday, one at Old Forester and one at the Evan Williams Bourbon Experience, but neglected to film anything because I think I was in each building for about two minutes. And, you know, if you uh, saw last year's Bourbon Trail video, which I will link up above, uh, you'll remember we did stop at Old Forester, had a good time, and um, kind of already seen it. There wasn't anything crazy special out, so he's kind of popped in, popped out. Spent more money at Duluth Trading, I think, next door than I spent anywhere else uh, on Whiskey Row yesterday. But today, uh, again, if you remember from last year's video, um, we wanted to make a stop at Jim Beam, but a tornado had come through and knocked out all the power. So today we finally made it. I'm gonna throw some more clips in, some uh, footage of the property here. You know, it's, you saw a bit last year. We didn't really get to hang out much, but this place is just awesome. This estate is beautiful. Um, I'm looking forward, we're not, we don't have a tour this time around, unfortunately, but I'm looking forward to coming back. I did get to get in the gift shop. We got here right when they opened, grabbed myself a Knob Creek 18 here, which I'd been kind of hoping for. They've got uh, the most recent Booker's batch as well, the uh, 202401. I'm a little hesitant because I uh, haven't seen really any reviews on it yet. And uh, then they've got Little Book Chapter 7, which I'm also deciding to leave. Thankfully, my friends are with me. I've gotten a bottle of each. So if nothing else, I'll get to try it. But uh, let me know in the comments below how much did I mess up not grabbing those while I was here. So anyway, I'm going to show you some pieces of the property here and then uh, head off to our next stop. After our second stop of the day, we're hitting the Four Roses bottling facility here, right down the road from Jim Beam. Went inside, I heard, you know, usually they'll have some of their single barrel selects uh, in there for purchase. They had four of the recipes today. I wasn't quite fast enough on the draw to grab one of them. I can't remember what the letters were, it's very confusing in there. But uh, I did grab one. Uh, I will, I've also forgotten which one I got, but I'm excited. It's 120 proof. Uh, I'm pretty excited to try that one. So they had a limited two, but I'm trying to be good and hold on that bourbon budget. So. Uh, anyway, we are now off to Heaven Hill for our Bottle Your Own experience. I'm looking forward to that and seeing what they have for us to check out down there. So uh, I'm going to throw some more video in here of uh, Four Roses Bottling Facility and uh, catch you at Heaven Hill. So 
we made it to our next stop for the Heaven Hill Bourbon Experience here in Bardstown. Uh, got to run in real quick. They released uh, Burn Iron Barrel Proof this morning. And even though we're gonna have a chance to bottle that in our uh, You Do Bourbon Experience here in a few minutes, I'm kind of rolling the dice and I'm probably gonna grab the Elijah Craig in there. I think the uh, fourth option is uh, their single malt, which I'm not super excited about grabbing, so I'm probably gonna do the Elijah Craig. But yeah, went in, there were about five or six of those burn imes left uh, on the, uh, behind the counter, behind the register. You all remember this place again from last year. You know, it's a little, little more overcast this time around, but man, just all these cool, all the Rick houses in the background, this beautiful visitor center here. Big fan of this place too. So uh, I'm gonna try to get some more video inside, and also I'm hoping I can show you some video of the uh, you do bourbon uh, bottling your own bottle experience inside. I think it's gonna be really cool. So I'm uh, gonna head inside and see what we can find. We just finished up our You Do Bourbon experience at Heaven Hill. It was fantastic. It was awesome getting to try uh, all those different barrel proof bourbons. Uh, you know, I was really close to that select stock, the uh, single malt, but at the end of the day, Elijah Craig has my heart. So I got the Elijah Craig barrel proof. It was super good. Hopefully this wind is not gonna be a problem. I bet it is. Anyway, we're gonna walk this way so you don't get uh, blasted out by the wind. Uh, we're here at Bardstown now. We're gonna jump in and grab some lunch. We stopped you last year, just had a quick drink, didn't really try much or have any food. So we're gonna give another shot. I think we're gonna like, I've heard really good things about the, uh, the restaurant here. So hoping uh, this will be a good spot for us. Try some more, some more drinks, see what they got in their store and uh, then off to the next spot. Just wrapped up over at Bardstown Distilling, went there for lunch, uh, had an awesome time. It's just such a beautiful property. If you've never seen it, I'll include some of the video of the property and the building. It's, it's a crazy facility. Um, anyway, while we were there, I did uh, manage to snag myself a Discovery Series 8. So I've got an 11 at home, and I saw the 8 was also highly recommended. So they had everything 8 through 11 there. So again, let me know if I missed out on the 9 or the 10, but I think the 8 was, was the right choice. So now that we've wrapped up lunch, we are about to head into Lux Row here behind me. I've never been. I've only had a couple of their products before, but I'm excited to check it out. So I'll uh, show you around the property here a little bit more and we'll see what we find inside. doing a little bit more time traveling. It is now the next day, which is either day two or three. I've lost count at this point. Um, we uh, had an awesome time yesterday hitting our spots over in Bardstown. And uh, today we're hanging around Frankfurt. This is where we're actually staying. Um, first thing in the morning, the place everybody is, Buffalo Trace, 
waiting for the release. And uh, we were hoping, we had our fingers crossed, that it was gonna be Blanton's day and standing in line, sure enough it is. So not gonna take too much time right now explaining the situation. We're actually gonna do this, uh, grab our bottles at the gift shop, then we got a couple more stops and then coming back for a 1215 tour. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get inside, grab our bottles, and then I think next stop's Wild Turkey, I think Castle and Key hopefully, and then back for a 1215 tour here at Buffalo Trace. See you inside. So a slight change of plans, we were originally going to pick up our uh, bottle of Blanton's uh, at the store and then head off to some other distilleries and then come back for our 1215 tour. Well, thankfully, the power of question worked in our favor. We asked them if they could bump us up. We got a 1015. So instead, we're going to jump on this 1015 tour here in about 10 minutes and then uh, hit those other spots later in the day. So we're going to show you some uh, footage of Buffalo Trace property here on our tour in just a minute. Guys, 
out of 53 gallons initially going into a Papi Van Winkle barrel, when we finally get to it 23 years later, there's maybe five or six gallons left in that barrel. So Austin, why is Papi so hard to find? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's really drinking bourbon 23 years ago, right? If you guys aren't familiar with the Blanton's bottle, each Blanton's bottle has a horse topper on it. Each horse topper has a letter on its coat, okay? If you collect all eight horse toppers, they actually spell out Blanton's and they represent a different part of the Kentucky horse race, okay? So you've got the gate, the start, the left turn, a left turn, <laughs> a left turn, and then the stretch, and then he's fist pumping in the winter circle. Okay, um, so pretty cool. There's not like a boardwalk piece or anything like that. The hardest one to probably find though is going to be the last end because it has two dots indicating that it's the last one. Okay, so if you are collecting these, just letting you know, if you are collecting these, you can actually send these toppers into Buffalo Trace, and they will do this to you, for you for free. So we finished up our tour of Buffalo Trace. Fantastic time as always. We had already uh, picked up our bottles of Blanton's and uh, thrown them in the truck. Uh, went back into the gift shop, grabbed a few more things as, as, as you would. Uh, but now we've made our way over to Castle and Key. Never been, but what a beautiful historic piece of property here. Uh, the old Taylor Distillery. This is, uh, this is quite a thing. So I'm going to throw some more video in here. Um, just kind of walking around some more B-roll clips so you can kind of check it out and see what we're dealing with here. But I uh, did a flight, some of their stuff. You know, I did two of their bourbons. Uh, they're weeded and then also a rye. The rye was phenomenal. Out of the four, that was definitely my favorite. So I think we're going to hit the gift shop here in a minute, go inside and see what we can find. Um, probably going to take one of those home. It was pretty good. So going to run inside here in a minute and then uh, show you around the property. But uh, after this, we're going to wild turkey. And then uh, I think maybe one more stop tomorrow and this trip is uh, coming to an end soon. <music> Thank you. 
All right, we've made it to our final stop of the afternoon. We're hitting the temporary wild turkey gift shop while they're finishing up their new visitor center. But uh, yeah, we've got quite a bit of cool stuff here too. I've never been, I'm excited. I would love to do a tour someday, but um, yeah, for now we're gonna get inside and check this place out and see what we have to take a peek at. All right, final day on our Kentucky trip on the Bourbon Trail. We are on our way back home to Michigan, but uh, have decided to make a final stop here at the famous Party Source Liquor Store and New Rift Distilling right next door. So we already hit uh, Party Source, checked out some stuff, went to their new, I didn't realize this, they have a new bar in the back where you can try all their store picks for a buck a piece. Um, really cool, got to try some stuff. Honestly, saved me some money because the stuff I tried, I was like, I don't really need it. But we're gonna hit New Rift here and then uh, that'll be it. We'll get home and we'll finally do the, the big reveal of everything we ended up grabbing, uh, all the bottles we have, and show you guys what we are able to bring home for Kentucky. All right, we're back home from our 2024 trip to the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. Uh, it's actually a few days after we got back. I did not have a chance to go through and uh, do this final little showing off of what we brought home, but I figured this is the moment everyone's been waiting for and wanted to do it right. So I want to show you all the, uh, the haul from Kentucky, and I will kind of real quick go through all these for you, tell you a bit about what we found and where we found it. Um, yeah, I feel like we did pretty good. You know, there's a lot of really interesting stuff here. Things that I don't see uh, here in Michigan. A couple things. That's not the case. I mean, like this old granddad bonded. I do get it here, but it was like $8, $7, $8 cheaper. Uh, early times bottled in a bond. I don't see very often. So I had to grab that. Big one I wanted to grab was the Knob Creek 18, which I do have 12s sitting right there. Um, I've always wanted to try this 18. Heard really good things, but again, it's something you really don't see on the shelf here in Michigan. I've, I've never seen one for sale before. Um, other than that, you know, they had Booker's and a uh, little book down there at Beam. I've got one each of those. It's not the current one, but you know, hey, can't get them all, right? Um, hit that. Next stop was Four Roses Bottling Facility, and I grabbed, what are you? These letters are always so confusing. This OBSO, uh, I have actually opened this one. It is pretty tasty. It's 120 proof, which apparently usually these are not that high. So that was pretty exciting. Uh, from there, we ended up at Heaven Hill and they had put out these Burnheim barrel proofs that morning and I just couldn't resist. But what we were there for was the You Do Bourbon Bottle Your Own uh, adventure. So we tried four different barrel proof uh, bourbons and whiskeys they had to sample in the tasting and then we got to choose which one we wanted to bottle and then decide to buy. So I like Elijah Craig barrel proof, decided this was the one for me and it was cool they let us do our own labeling so you know this would be a special bottle for the shelf. Um, geez where did we go next? We went to Lux Row and I didn't buy any bourbon but they did have a bourbon cream, an Ezra Brooks bourbon cream. So um, that'll go well with its friend here from Buffalo Trace, which was where we went the next day. As you recall from earlier in this video, the original plan was to hit Buffalo Trace, grab the allocated bottle, see you know what it was. We were hopeful it was Blanton's. 
thankfully it turned out that it was. And then we were gonna leave, come back for our tour, but they snuck us in. Anyway, so it was Blanton's. Uh, I am two letters away up here in Blanton's land from being able to spell the full word. So I grabbed, oh geez, don't knock anything over. What are you? Oh, yes, and I think there's a T in the box. I was able to get one in a box because I do like the bag they come in. Um, on top of that, obviously just bought the bourbon cream at Buffalo Trace. I didn't need any of the other, you know, regular stuff. After Buffalo Trace, oh, we missed this one from the Kroger at the beginning. I did grab this Maker's Cask 46. Uh, was not a huge fan. I'm gonna let it open up a bit, see if I change my mind. Uh, after Buffalo Trace, we did make a stop at Castle and Key. I really enjoyed this restoration rye. Um, out of the four things I tried, they had two bourbons, the rye, and gosh, I don't even remember what the last one was. Um, neither here nor there. Um, I really liked that restoration. So uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna be a pour it neat kind of a thing or throw it in a cocktail, but uh, pretty good. Um, after that, we made our stop at Wild Turkey, which I've opened this Russell's Reserve single barrel as well. This stuff is fantastic. I don't know if it's the exact same one they had uh, at their little bar, their pop-up bar they've got uh, going right now or not. So I don't know if I had this one down there. I tried one of them and then I also tried um, that single Rick House, which by the way, that stuff was awesome. You know, I will say it was a $50 pour. It's a little pricey, but you know, for those of you who don't know, that's like a $350 bottle at MSRP. At least I got to try it now, and I know I'm not buying one if I see it. It's good, but it ain't that good. Uh, so yeah, got the Russells, and then the next day, oh, can't forget the little guys. Those are just the cutest little things, aren't they? Um, so after that, the last day, we did run to that party source, uh, whatever the town is south of Cincinnati that I can never remember, and right in the same parking lot is New Riff, and we tried a couple flights, Ended up doing a flight of single barrel rise, and I ended up with this. What are you? Barrel 14564, Mac Harris pick. Uh, really liked this one out of the ones we tried, and I'm rolling the dice. I was gonna grab a single barrel bourbon that I tried and liked, but something about this spoke to me, being as I understand it, a one off, and I heard some folks, at least there, you know, the people trying to sell me stuff said it was worth my money, so. We'll see if I just completely fell for that trap or not. But anyway, you know, we had an awesome time. I hope you all like this kind of content. You know, this only happens like once a year, thankfully for my wallet. I will say I was at about 98% of my bourbon budget, so did pretty well. Um, you know, if you like this kind of content, please leave me a like, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think, both from earlier in the video, if you saw anything I missed out on or what you think of my, my bottles. I, how did I miss? I missed Bardstown. Oh my goodness. This one of the pricey bottles sitting right here in the front, I neglected to talk about. So um, I have a Discovery 11 right there. And I was looking, this is a Discovery Series 8, and I'd heard very good things about it. They had 8 through 11 in the store. Um, I did some, you know, sitting at the table for lunch, uh, going through Reddit, going through all kinds of reviews. Uh, it seemed like, and you tell me in the comments below, let me know if I'm wrong, but it seems like obviously the original ones, you know, fours and the earlier ones people are fanatical about. 11 got high marks, but then people were talking about eight, kind of being you know a bit of a dark horse. So um, they had eight through 11 in the gift shop. I was like, I'll try one of them. Eight seems to be, I already have the 11. Didn't want to go over the 10. Didn't hear a lot about the nine, but the eight had my attention. Um, so I'm excited to give this one a shot. This was one of the pricier bottles we brought home. Uh, I think second only to the Knob Creek 18. So um, hopefully this is a good one. It looks great. So I'll report back on my findings on this guy. Hope you like this kind of content. It only happens once a year-ish. You know, maybe we'll get down there again, but usually this is kind of a springtime, break up the, the winter monotony kind of a trip for us. Um, so if you like this kind of content, leave me a like below, leave me a comment, let me know what you think about our stops, where we went. Uh, if you see that I missed anything I should have grabbed or what you think of the bottles I brought home. So if you're not subscribed already, please do so so you see more of this kind of content. Uh, make sure you hit the notification bell. Subscribers don't always get pushed this content right away or at all, depending on what the algorithm's feeling like doing that day. So make sure you hit the notification bell if you wanna make sure you see these videos when they go live. Really appreciate y'all stopping by and check out the video and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.